Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about an introduction to extreme classification. <clears throat> this area is also called as XC or XMC. XC stands for extreme classification. XMC stands for extreme multi-class classifier, uh, multi uh, or or XML, which is basically extreme multi-label classification. Right. So, uh, so let's get started. Uh, this is uh, the first video in a series of videos that I'm going to do on this topic. And therefore, in this video, we'll basically just get introduced to the field called as extreme classification. Many of these slides have been taken from Professor Manik Verma's uh, course in IIT Delhi. Uh, so what is extreme classification? Now, all of us understand classification. So if I give you this picture and if I ask you uh, a simple question, is this George Washington or not? Now, that's basically a binary classification problem. So, you know, answering yes, no questions involving some uncertainty, and that is why you need some classifier. Okay. Now, I can also ask you another question, which US president is present in this image? Right. So which US president is present in this image? And in that case, uh, you know, that's a multi class classification problem. So essentially you have multiple choices. And then uh, let's say if I give you like five different choices and then I ask you which US president is present in this image, that's a multi class classification problem. And then there are multi label classification problems where there are multiple choices and you have to pick up multiple answers from these multiple choices. So for example, if I give you, uh, you know, a picture, uh, uh, if, I, if I give you, let's say a movie name, and uh, then there are several choices possible uh, in terms of genre, right? So movies belong to several categories or genres like comedy, thriller, romance, sci-fi, and so on. And if I basically give you a particular movie name and I ask you which genre does this movie belong to? Well, the movie could belong to multiple of those possible genres, right? So that's called as multi-label classification. So um, another example could be if I give you a photograph with, let's say, 10 different US presidents, and then I ask you which US presidents are present in this image. Now, you know, there is no single answer. There have been several US presidents and maybe, you know, those 10 were present in that image. Okay. So that's called multi-level classification. It's like multi-class classification, but then multiple of those classes could be valid or relevant to the current test point. So what is extreme classification now uh, versus traditional classification? In traditional classification, uh, it has small number of possible choices. So for example, you know, whether you look at an email and say whether it is spam or not, or if Kinect uh, has to essentially guess what kind of gesture you are trying to do, it has probably a set of 100 gestures and then you try to, and then Kinect tries to figure out one of them, right? Uh, similarly, you know, uh, Windows Hello, uh, basically facial recognition, it sort of tries to figure out whether it is the right user or not. So binary classification, surface pen, right? Essentially, it uh, uh, tries to, you know, uh, as soon as you type some sort of a character, it tries to do OCR in some ways and then tries to figure out among those 100 characters, what kind of character would you have typed and so on. So, so you know, typically traditional classification deals with small number of choices. Now, many times just binary choices, two choices. Sometimes there could be up to, let's say, 25,000 choices, but that's not very common either, right? Typically it is binary or it is small number of classes, right? Now, extreme classification exactly differs in that respect. So it is classification with millions of labels, okay? So for example, if I give you this ad, so this is there is an ad from Geico, right? And essentially the idea is that uh, you have to tell me what are the big queries for which I should show this ad, right? They're also called as ad keywords or bid phrases for which Geico should bid so as to show this ad to users so that users find them relevant and click on them, okay? So now there are possibly millions and hundreds of millions of possible queries or bid phrases for which Geico could, uh, you know, uh, amongst which some of them are relevant to Geico, right? So for example, these are all, uh, you know, uh, bid phrases which uh, are, are uh, you know, which are relevant uh, for this ad. Now, in this particular case, uh, given an ad, I want to figure out which of these bid keywords um, are relevant from a space of possibly hundreds of millions of such queries, right? So, so therefore, the number of labels in my case are hundreds of millions, and of that, I have to choose of them. I have to basically choose a limited few, okay? Not just one, but a limited few. Uh, now, uh, given this kind of a paradigm, uh, XE has applications in several, several uh, domains. So uh, just to sort of uh, uh, show another illustration, uh, if I have a particular user and I want to figure out what items do they like, now a particular, uh, you know, the number of items could be very large, let's say hundreds of millions of them, right? And users, you know, one user could like bananas and apples and oranges, the other user could like oranges, uh, you know, mango and jackfruit and so on, right? So basically users like some of those items given a very large number of items. And what you want to do is to figure out 
uh, for every, uh, you know, you basically want to learn this function where, uh, you know, uh, given a particular user, you want to find out some subset of this large set of items which the user would prefer, right? So once you learn this function, you can, of course, apply it on test points. So given a test user, you then want to recommend items to this user that, hey, these could be relevant to you, okay? So from that perspective, you can think about XC as some sort of a superpower to accurately answer uh, in a very small amount of time, few milliseconds, a multiple choice question with a billion choices, right? So, so, so if you look at Amazon, right? I mean, you know, users come onto Amazon and they have like millions of products to buy. Now, can you recommend to such users uh, within a few milliseconds, uh, you know, a few of those products, right? So those are recommendation system problems and one way of solving them is using extreme classification. Of course, there are other ways of solving them using things like collaborative filtering and so on, but it turns out extreme classification methods are pretty powerful and lead to uh, lead to complementary recommendations, if not better. Okay. So there are several applications besides recommendation systems that I already talked about. XE can be also applied in information retrieval for web search and advertising. It can be useful for natural language processing, like in language modeling. Uh, because you know when you have to guess the next word, um, next word completion kind of a problem, it is like from a large set of from large vocabulary, you have to make a choice of the next token. Document tagging. So yeah, if you think about Wikipedia, well, uh, each web page is sort of tagged with some category. Now there could be hundreds of thousands of such tags, and then one has to choose the right tag to put onto this particular document or Wikipedia article. Person recognition. So you know there are tens of thousands of celebrities, and if you have like a photo, you want to figure out which person is there in that photo. Well, that's again an extreme classification problem because you have a label space of tens of thousands of people, uh, if not if not uh, millions, right? Learning universal feature representations, which could be very meaningful for various computer vision tasks. Uh, it is also useful in bioinformatics, like gene function prediction, because again, the label space there is pretty huge thanks to various combinations of, of genes and um, uh, amino acids and so on, okay? So here are some applications, some, some detailed applications, right? So uh, remember, XC or extreme classification is useful in all such situations where you want to classify something into a very large label space, right? So for example, on Amazon, you may want to do, uh, you know, um, uh, you, you may want to sort of uh, um, show, uh, you may want to decide what are the ad keywords for which, uh, uh, for which this ad should be shown, right? So essentially, um, uh, this particular thing is essentially Tesco's distilled water. What are the what are the keywords for which this ad should fire up? Okay. Now um, uh, at this at this time when this work was done, basically maybe around 2013 kind of time period, Bing ads would just show this kind of keyword, water five. Now that's not a great keyword for uh, distilled water uh, as a product, uh, but extreme classification methods could actually come up with could could classify amongst hundreds of millions of queries and then come up with these kinds of queries uh, which can be used as ad keywords um, so as to so as to uh, you know uh, uh, which which can be recommended as ad keywords right so and they they look very very uh, creative and of course very very relevant to tesco's distilled water right distilled water tesco buy distilled water uh, distilled water uk distilled water amazon and so on Okay, so and as I was talking earlier, uh, XE could also be used for item to item recommendation. Uh, so, for example, if you if if the user is already on this uh, page where they are reading about this book on Walmart, um, now uh, Walmart also shows these four recommendations. If if you look at the same book on Amazon, well, Amazon uh, failed to show recommendations at this point when this work was done. But if you look at uh, extreme classification compared to Amazon or Walmart, extreme classification was able to come up with uh, first a large number of recommendations which are very relevant, and second, it could come up with uh, uh, recommendations which are very diverse in nature as well. Right. So, so uh, again, here the input was a particular product, and the output is related products. Now, limited related products on Amazon or Walmart could be very huge, uh, and that is why it is also an extreme classification problem. Classify if into one of those different ca product categories, right? Uh, uh, or classify into one of those product uh, product uh, products themselves, product names themselves, which are basically labeled classes here. Okay. <clears throat> Extreme classification has also been used in Bing for Bing related search. So uh, related search, as you know, um, you know the idea is that uh, uh, when the user fires a query, for example, cam procedure shoulder, uh, the user expect to see some related searches. Now, in this particular case, uh, you know, again, in that time period, uh, Bing actually used to show only one uh, related search, cam Newton shoulder surgery. Now. 
if you think about it, CAM procedure shoulder is a particular kind of a procedure for a shoulder surgery, and uh, CAM Newton is a person here. So therefore, here this CAM and this CAM actually have nothing to do with each other. They are basically incorrectly conflated just because they have the same uh, word contained in them. Okay. On the other hand, extreme classification was able to come up with really good uh, recommendations how long of work uh, for shoulder surgery, shoulder surgery procedures, uh, so shoulder uh, joint resurfacing surgery, and so on. Because so the suggestions from extreme classification algorithms are pretty good here. Wikipedia tagging. So uh, if you basically look at uh, uh, different Wikipedia pages, for example, Divine Comedy has a page here. Now, if you look on uh, categories that have been uh, allocated to this page by Wikipedia editors, they basically include things like this. Um, and they all make quite some sense. They are pretty reasonable. Now, if you think about extreme classification, interestingly, extreme classification was able to come up automatically uh, many of these categories. So much of the work that Wikipedia editors were doing could have been avoided, uh, you know, if uh, if uh, extreme classification kind of algorithms uh, were used uh, there. Right. Um, uh, besides that, extreme classification was able. The XE algorithms were also able to come up with new uh, uh, new uh, classes or new tags, which made complete sense for 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 these kinds of articles, which 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 were not put up by Wikipedia editors at all. Okay. So now, how do you do XE though, right? So uh, do you really need some special approaches or your typical traditional uh, you know classifiers like SVM's logistic regression or gradient boosting and so on will work out of the box? Now it turns out that things don't work out of the box. You need special approaches to do extreme classification. If I were to do uh, you know, a traditional approach uh, for extreme classification, I could do one of these two things. Uh, reduce problems to binary classification problems. So for example, if my problem is given a particular ad, predict the query or the bid phrase, right? So queries become bid phrases in that sense. So given a particular ad, predict the bid phrase, right? Now, uh, there could be like 100 million uh, uh, bid phrases and uh, you know there is a particular ad distilled water uh, you know that's the product that i want to sell so uh, i could reduce this problem to a binary classification problem where i would say that i would take each of those 100 million bid phrases and uh, you know learn some sort of a classifier h which is a binary classifier which uh, you know, takes the ad and the a particular phrase and then figures out whether the phrase is relevant to the ad or not now that's about uh, reducing the problem from a multi-label uh, classification kind of a setting to a binary classification setting. Now, clearly, the binary classification setting uh, cannot make use of label correlations, and therefore, just does not give you really good. Uh, it does not give you good accuracies at all. Another way of solving this problem is basically as as people do in recommendation systems literature using collaborative filtering. So here, the basic idea is that uh, you know you have users, you have items, and you want to recommend things. Now, you know, rather than thinking about items as uh, the, the, the whole set of items as a large label set, you could basically think of uh, uh, this problem as recommending uh, these items to users and therefore apply collaborative filtering on this ratings matrix. Typically, ratings matrix is pretty sparse and therefore people uh, essentially use SVD or some such algorithm so as to essentially do matrix factorization. And then they come up with things like uh, uh, users versus uh, topics or users versus uh, uh, you know uh, interests and uh, interests versus uh, items kind of a matrix right now if you think about it uh, uh, svd is very very time consuming to do it at large scale people typically have a very small k uh, the number of user traits or it, as, as it is called the rank of the matrix they keep it very small which basically means that a lot of information can be lost when you actually reduce the uh, number of factors to a very small number. Uh, therefore, you know, collaborative filtering again may not really give you very good accuracy across many data sets. Um, in XE, uh, there are several approaches to do extreme classification in, uh, you know, uh, given that the binary classification and collaborative filtering kind of settings don't work. Uh, so some of those approaches, uh, uh, the earlier approaches in extreme classification were tree-based. So where uh, uh, the idea is that uh, uh, given a large amount of training data, what you would do is to basically um, uh, take all of those examples along with uh, the labels that they have been associated with and create some sort of a tree which uh, uh, splits these labels. So remember, splits these labels into uh, left and right child. Okay. So as you see here at the root node, there are uh, all kinds of labels, but then a left node and right node have disjoint set of labels. And then you can keep splitting it, keep splitting it. Okay. Now, how do you construct this tree is a separate problem. But you know, once you construct this tree, the good idea, uh, the good thing that you could do is to basically take a test point which comes in, you know, go to the tree, 
ask the tree, uh, ask the node, hey, depending on the features of this of this uh, of this new data point, whether it should you should follow the left path or the right path. In this particular case, you follow the right path, and again at this point you follow the right path, and you reach to a leaf node. Uh, where there is a distribution over the classes to which uh, this particular uh, uh, instance can belong to. And then you end up uh, choosing, uh, you know, uh, top few labels which are present in this leaf node and put them at, at the output. Okay. So that is how broadly extreme classification old approaches based on uh, tree based methods work. More recent approaches have been all deep learning based. Um, so, you know, in the next few videos in this series, I'll sort of start by giving a short overview on tree based approaches, and then we will delve deeper into deep learning based approaches for this interesting problem of extreme classification. In summary, extreme classification involves multi label classification where the number of labels could be in millions. Uh, and uh, that is why it is really conducive in several applications across information retrieval, recommendation systems, language modeling, where uh, in general there could be large number of classes uh, to choose from. The earlier methods were tree based, and we'll focus on those tree based methods in the next video. Uh, um, you know, but more recent methods have been deep learning oriented. If you want to uh, read more about uh, extreme classification, look at some papers, recent papers, data sets, benchmark comparisons, and so on. You know, here is the extreme classification repository, which has all of those. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my research on my homepage.